to the pier and back again by Peter Ling, with Anne Morrish, Jean Trend and Basil Moss. To the pier and back again. Well, for once, the spare room's looking quite presentable. But who is he, Celia? Oh, those awful birds. They will roost on the chimney pots. Well, that's why they sound so loud. It echoes down to the empty grate. Oh, do you suppose we should light a fire in here to air the room? Celia, who is he? Well, I told you, Mr. Fenn. Louis Fenn. I, I should think he'd like that, wouldn't he? How do I know what he'd like or dislike? You haven't told me the first thing about the man. Oh, well, that's not true. I told you, I met him last November in London. When you went up to the opera and stayed with the cousins. He's a friend of theirs, is he? You never say. No, no, no. He's nothing to do with the cousins. I met him at the opera in the interval. He, he spoke to me. He asked if he could look at my programme. He'd arrived late and they were sold out. And then we started to discuss the performance. I see. And at the end of the interval when the bell went, you said, if you're ever in the neighbourhood of Sandgate, do drop in and meet my sister. Better still, why not come and stay for a long weekend? Of course not. What happened was, he asked me to have lunch with him the next time I was in London. Would you care to have lunch with me? So I said I'd love to. You take my breath away, Celia, you really do. We had lunch two weeks later in a very nice restaurant that he knew near the British Museum. And you never said a word about it. But why didn't you tell me? I'm telling you now. We had lamb chops and red currant jelly. I mean, why didn't you tell me about him? I didn't know whether to explain to you or... Well, at that point, I didn't even know if there was anything to explain. I didn't know whether I'd ever see him again. But as it turned out... As it turned out, I wrote back and wished him a happy new year, and and I invited him down to stay for a day or two. Yes, but why? He's on holiday. It seemed to be the ideal opportunity. On holiday? In January? He's a teacher at a boys' school near Dorking. A very good school, he says. It's a very old foundation. Oh, I'm so glad. I still don't see for the life of me why you had to ask him to stay. Are you fond of him? Well, I don't know yet. I think I might be. Well, that's what I have to find out. Well, how old is he? What does he look like? Oh, quite pleasant. He's got a very good sort of face. Not exactly handsome, but a nice personality. Strong, but quiet. Reserved, I'd say. He doesn't sound very reserved. Accepting invitations to stay with total strangers. You still haven't told me how old he is. 42. Same as me. Quite a coincidence. Except that you're 43. You always forget I'm two years younger than you and I'm oh, only 41. Say, what difference does it make? 41, 42, 43? We're not children, are we? This window doesn't look very clean. Oh, you can hardly see to the end of the promenade. Oh, there's the door. Well, that couldn't be him, could it? Already. Oh, Kate, do I look all right? Now, don't start fussing. Go down and let him in. I just hope I haven't made a terrible mistake. So do I. Good afternoon, Miss Brady. Good afternoon. I'm afraid I'm a little early. I got to the station sooner than I expected, so I, I caught the train before. Uh, pardon? Before the one I meant to. Oh, it doesn't matter a bit. Do come in. You've got a splendid outlook here along the seafront. I'm afraid you're not seeing it at its best today. No, no. But it must be wonderful uh, in the summer. We like it best at this time of the year, when it's not so crowded. Shall I take your coat? Oh, let me. Oh, oh, I, I do beg your pardon. Sorry, my fault. Uh, no, my umbrella, I'll just... Oh, oh. oh I, 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 I really am terribly sorry. So clumsy. No bones broken. I've got a very thick skull. Oh, idiotic of me. I, I didn't see you standing there at first, and then when I, I dropped the umbrella... I'll put it in the hall stand, out of harm's way. <laughs> Aren't you going to introduce us, Celia? Oh, of course. Mr. Fenn, this is my sister, Kate. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> Celia's told me a lot about you. Has she? How funny. She told me nothing about you till today. I'll show you to your room, shall I? This way, Mr. Fenn. Here we are. Oh. It's a nice light room. Uh, at least it is when the sun comes out. Mm. And you get a good view along the beach. Yes, indeed. Oh, magnificent. Is that the pier over there, or...? Or what's left of it. It's closed now, you know. Oh, no, I, I didn't know. What a pity. I mean, if you 
care for peers. Oh, we do. Is this your first visit to Sandgate, Mr Finn? You know, I'm afraid it is. Ah. I'll go and put on the kettle. I expect you're dying for a cup of tea. Well, what I must do before anything else, if you wouldn't mind, um, if it's not inconvenient, I mean, if you could tell me where I could, um... Yes? The thing is, I've got to find a chemist shop. A chemist? Oh, I am sorry. Aren't you feeling well? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I'm perfectly all right, thank you. But but I left home in rather a hurry this morning, and it wasn't until I got on the train I remembered I'd left my sponge bag behind. Toothbrush, toothpaste, razor, that sort of thing. There's that little gift shop by the arcade. Don't they sell bath salts and things? They're closed for the winter, dear, no. No, I'm afraid it will mean walking into the middle of town. You see to the tea things, Celia, while I walk Mr Fenn along to the high street. It won't take us ten minutes, and the tea will be all ready by the time we get back. I don't want to put you to any trouble. It'll be a pleasure. I'll be glad of a breath of air. Did you say something about a, a breath of air? <laughs> it's always like this when the wind's in the northeast. Oh, noisy creatures. They come into their own on a day like this. They've got the beach to themselves. Uh, not quite. There's someone at the far end. Over there, walking a dog. That's something I've always wanted, a dog. It must be company on a walk. But Father never let us keep animals, and now, well, you know what Celia's like. She'd sooner have a cat any day. Oh, would she? Of course. She's a real cat person. I thought you must have read some of her cat poems. She's written such a lot about cats. Has she? She hasn't shown you her poetry either. Oh, you surprise me. Well, she did say she'd let me see some this weekend. Ah, yes. Well, we'd better cross over here. It's a nuisance being so far from the shops. The real shops, I mean. Real? Well, those along the front are just holiday shops. Ice cream parlours, postcards and sticks of rock. That's why they're all boarded up now for the winter. There's one with the light on. Pass the phone box. Oh, that's the amusement arcade. There doesn't seem to be anyone in there. Well, there are no visitors about on a day like this. And locals never go into places like that. Not even the youngsters? There aren't any youngsters. There's nothing here for them, you see. Only one cinema left, and that's falling to pieces. No theatres or concerts. No opera, of course. Not your sort of place at all. My that's why sort Celia of... has to take herself off to London for her beloved Puccini. Ah, here we are. If we turn down here, there's a chemist along there on the left. It's very good of you to come all this way. Nonsense. It'll help me work up an appetite. When I've been slogging away in the kitchen to make the supper, I don't feel like eating it. Unless I snatch a bit of a walk in between whiles. You enjoy cooking, though. I remember Celia telling me. She said that, did she? <laughs> oh, it's a question of having to. If it was up to Celia, we'd live off boiled eggs and cups of tea. Oh, I, I hadn't realised. Oh, well, you must know she's the artistic one. Her poetry and her music, they're all she lives for, really. I suppose that's one of the things you've got in common. Arts and so on. Oh, I wouldn't say that exactly. Poetry, well, I do teach English lit at school, but that comes down to cramming the boys' heads with a few quotations. And as for music, I have no pretensions there at all, alas. Now you're being modest. Here's the shop. Modesty doesn't come into it, I'm telling you. I can't even sing the national anthem without going off key. I'm completely tone deaf. You do surprise me, Mr Finn. More and more. After you, Miss Brady. Well, that was a delicious meal. I really must congratulate you, Miss Brady. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Oh. <laughs> oh, I thought I was under the impression that... We both contributed to it, didn't we, dear? Of course. Celia laid the table. She has such a good eye for flower arrangements. Artistic again, you see. Yes, indeed. Very attractive, I must say. All those jolly little um, uh, pink and... Um... Spray chrysanthemums. Ah, <laughs> it was on the tip of my tongue. You're not fond of flowers, perhaps? Well, I, I haven't really had much chance. Uh, I like flowers, of course. At a respectful distance. How strange. Now, I couldn't exist without flowers. They're the breath of life to me. Well, now to season, breathing comes quite expensive. <laughs> Uh, coffee, Mr. Fenn? Oh, Cream? Sugar? Please. Of course, on a nice summer day, there's nothing I enjoy more than sitting out in a garden with a good thriller. And I'm a as thriller? Good... Believe me, Miss Brady, after a whole term of Shakespeare, Chaucer and Milton, a good cops and robbers chase comes as a blessed relief. Well, you do surprise me. My very words. I was saying this afternoon, Mr. Fenn is full of surprises. 
I'm sorry, I, I don't quite follow. I thought you and my sister must have so much in common, but it seems I was wrong. Celia, dear, don't let your coffee get cold, will you? Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes, it really seems you don't know each other at all well. But what puzzles me most is, why should a man who's tone deaf, as Mr Fenn admits to being, choose to sit through a performance of La Boheme? It was Boheme, wasn't it? Oh, I think you must be mixing me up with somebody else. I haven't been to an opera for years. Oh, I... I'm sorry. Have, have I said the wrong thing? It wasn't your fault. Kate tricked you into it. You see, Mr Fenn, I'd been led to understand that Celia met you for the first time during a performance of La Boheme. But that couldn't really be true, could it? Oh, Lord, I, I'm frightfully sorry. I thought you knew about the Bureau. The Bureau? Must you? Why are you talking about a Bureau all of a sudden? Do you mean the one in the drawing room? He means the marriage Bureau, Kate. The one that introduced me to Mr Fenn. Now, are you satisfied? Half past ten. Goodness, the evening has simply flown by, hasn't it? I never realised... That's because there was so much to talk about. I do hope we didn't bore you. Oh, not in the very least. I've often wondered how marriage bureau actually operate. It's been fascinating to have a first-hand account. You do understand that the one we chose has a splendid reputation, uh, an old, established firm, highly respectable. Do you mean some of them aren't quite so respectable? Uh, I assure you I was scrupulously careful. That's why I turned down the first three men the agency sent me. But when I met Mr Fenn, I knew at once that he was all right. Really? Do tell me, how many ladies did you turn down, Mr Fenn? None at all. Miss Brady was the first one I met. One look was enough. How very romantic. Now Kate's teasing me again. Yes. I'm quite sure you have lots to say to one another, so I'll take myself off to bed. Uh, no, no, don't. I, I mean, please don't rush away on my account. I was just about to make a move as it happens, so if you'll excuse me, I think I'll slip up to my room. Very well, Mr Fenn. After all, we have got the whole weekend ahead of us. Yes, indeed. Uh, good night, Miss Brady, and, uh, <laughs> well, good night, Miss Brady. Don't you think it might be less confusing if we were all on Christian name terms? Of course. Good night, Celia, and good night, Kate. Good night, Louis. I hope you sleep soundly. I'm sure I shall. I always do. Good night. A charming man, don't you think? Perfect manners. That's so important and sincere. I do feel sincerity is absolutely vital in a fiancé, don't you? Celia, dear, you're waffling. Come and sit down and tell me why. Why? But surely, if he weren't sincere, one would never have a mood. Not that. I meant, why any of it? Why go to a marriage bureau in the first place? Oh, I... I just thought I'd try to see if it worked. And it did work, because here he is. Dear Lewis. I've been calling him Lewis in my mind for several weeks. But there's no doubt that Mr. Fenn springs more naturally to my lips. Stop playing for time. You still haven't told me why. Oh, well. You must admit we're neither of us getting any younger, are we? No, I had noticed that. But it didn't send me straight into the arms of a marriage bureau. What made you decide you wanted to get married? All the other girls at school seem to be married by now, with families and birthday cakes and photographs of their babies. I feel as though I've missed something. Do you? I go to tea with some of them. And I look at those rows of tiny Wellingtons and I can't help asking myself, why them? Why not me? I never knew you felt so strongly about children. Oh, it's not so much the children themselves, but children's things are so lovely. There's always a swing under the apple trees and fairy cycles. So I decided if I were ever going to have a husband and a family, I couldn't risk putting it off any longer. I had to take some sort of positive action. You're determined to get married, are you? Oh, yes. At least I think I am. I like the idea of being married. I've always thought of myself as a wife somehow with a kind, loving husband. Loving? Well, loving in a general sort of way, but undemanding. I'm looking for companionship, the communion of thoughts and ideas between two kindred spirits. That's what sent me off to the marriage bureau. 
But why didn't you tell me all this before? I was afraid you'd laugh at me. Besides, most of what I told you was true. Louis did take me to lunch near the British Museum, and we did have lamb chops with red currant jelly. But not Bohème. Well, no. We met by arrangement under the clock at Waterloo. And as soon as I saw him, I knew he was everything I'd hoped for. He came up to your specifications? Of course. Nobody could call Louis demanding. Perhaps that's because we don't yet know what his demands are. What do you mean? That school of his may have a historic foundation, but I can't believe they pay their staff very generously. Didn't you notice his shoes? Awfully scuffed. What are you trying to say? A word of warning, that's all. He's clearly not a rich man, and when Father died, he left us, well, comfortable. I do think you're horrid. It never occurred to you that Lewis might feel quite deeply about me, did it? Since you ask, no. There. There, you see, I knew you'd laugh at me. No, dear. I'm not laughing. Not laughing at all. Good morning, good morning. What a glorious day. You can see the pier quite clearly this morning. That means it's going to rain. It's a sure sign. Good morning, Lewis. I hope you slept well. Oh, yes, my goodness, yes. Like a top. What would you like for breakfast? Uh, just some tea and toast, if you have it, please. And marmalade? Uh, if it's not inconvenient. Of course it isn't. It would only be inconvenient if we had no marmalade. If we had no marmalade, it would be downright impossible. Sugar? Oh, thank you, no, I, I don't take it. Such an abstemious man. No cooked breakfast, no sugar. Toast and marmalade at your service. Ah, thank you. No, living in a boarding school is rather like being a monk, you know. We have to live frugally. I think it's meant to act as a good example to the boys. Depressing for you. But I expect you make up for that during the holidays, indulging in extravagant luxuries. Oh, hardly. I, I live quite modestly all the year round. I, I don't go in for extravagances. Is that from choice? Or because you can't afford to? Kate, really? No, you're entitled to know. I, I don't have very much money, I'm afraid. Oh, Never mind. Money isn't everything. My sister can say that in the comfortable knowledge that we have a regular unearned income from my father's investments. Well, that must be very nice for you. When I applied to the Bureau, I explained that I wasn't necessarily looking for a wealthy husband. His bank account would not be the prime consideration. Celia has an idealistic nature, you see, whereas I'd take you to be a much more practical person. Practical? Me? When you applied to the Bureau, didn't you have something rather more realistic in mind? Oh, no, 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 not really. I. Uh... What an absolutely splendid day. The sea and the sunshine sparkling. Won't last. The clouds are piling up in the west already. All the more reason to make the most of it. You and I shall go for a walk presently, Lewis, to the pier and back again, after you've finished your breakfast. Oh, he's hardly started it yet. You haven't touched your toast. Uh, I, uh, I'm not very hungry. A nice, brisk walk will soon put that right. Come along. It'll help you get up an appetite for lunch. There's that man again. Which man? At the other end of the beach, walking his dog. Kate and I saw him yesterday. Oh, that man. He takes his dog out every day. Animals can be a dreadful tie, can't they? I suppose so. Kate said your father would never let you keep pets. No dogs, no cats. Cats. Ah, there was a great sadness to me when I was a girl. I simply worship cats, you see. I must show you some of my poems. But after your father... I, I mean, there's nothing to stop you now, is there? You could have as many cats as you like. Yes, I could, couldn't I? Furry, purry, bundle of fluff. One little kitten is never enough. That's one of my favourites. I shall read it to you when we get home. Very kind. So, why don't you? Why don't I what? Uh, have a cat, since you're so fond of them. Oh, I don't know. Cats do need looking after. It's really easier to write about imaginary cats. I suppose it must be. I'd have to remember to feed it. So dreadful if I ever forgot. Because when I shut myself up in the study to write, I lose all count of time, you see. Do you really? Well, that's why I leave all the cooking and shopping to Kate. Oh, don't look so anxious, Lewis. You won't starve, I promise. You'll be well looked after here. Will I? Oh, yes. Kate's really an excellent housekeeper, and she has a very light hand with pastry. Oh, she could look after that cat for you, then. But then it would be her cat and not mine. I shouldn't enjoy that. What are you doing? 
I was looking at those pebbles, big flat ones, the kind we used to play ducks and drakes with when I was a boy, skimming them across the water. Ah, ah, like that. Oh, damn. Oh, I, I, I do beg your pardon. You can't make them bounce today. It's too rough. If I could just catch the crest of a wave. Ah, how's that? Oh, no. I told you. One more try. I wonder if you'll be doing much of that after we're married. What? Standing about, throwing stones at the sea. You still feel that marriage is a possibility, then, for you and me? Well, I don't see why not. I can just picture the two of us standing like this at the water's edge throughout the endless years, forever gazing out at the far horizon, forever standing on this very spot. Except when the tide comes in, of course. I was speaking in a metaphoric sense. You and I and the sea, together for eternity, wedded to this magical seashore. Now, there's a really perfect stone. I could never imagine us living anywhere but Sandgate. Watch this. Oh, hopeless. You missed the sea altogether that time. My hand slipped. Don't you think it's perhaps a little soon for us to start um, making plans? But that's what we're here for, surely, to make plans. Well, I, I thought we'd agreed that this weekend would be a chance for us to get to know one another. And so far... So far, we're getting to know each other beautifully. Heavens, I feel as though we were practically married already. Yes. Louis? Is there something wrong? Well, perhaps I'm not quite as certain as you are. Perhaps we, we don't really have very much in common after all. Oh, but surely... I'm not the poetic type. I like reading thrillers. I often go and watch football matches on Saturday afternoons, and I like a game of bar billiards in the pub afterwards. We all have our little shortcomings. It's nothing to be ashamed of. And I know that you'll rise above them sooner or later, with my help. Oh, will I? I shall make it my duty to introduce you to the finer things in life. In time, I've no doubt you'll be a different person. I see. Shall we be getting back now? I, I think I felt the first spots of rain. Oh, dear. And we never got as far as the pier after all. Oh, I'm quite used to disappointments. Besides, there'll be plenty of other opportunities, won't there? Oh, there goes the man with the dog. Up the steps to the promenade. Yes. He's got it on a leash now. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, oh I beg your pardon. Oh, uh, don't, don't mention it. I was just coming to make your bed, but you've already made it, I see. <laughs> Force of habit, I, I always do. You've made your bed, and now you're packing your bag. That's right, I... I just thought you were thinking I would... of leaving us already? It might be as well, perhaps. I'm very sorry. Have you quarrelled with Celia? Oh, no, no, not at all. Actually, she, she doesn't know I'm leaving. I thought I'd just slip away quietly. But you can't simply walk out. It would be much word. the best in the long run, honestly. Best for you or for Celia? For both of us. I realise now that it was a terrible mistake. I should never have come here. So your courage failed you, after all. I have to admit, I am not the marrying kind. I suppose I am what they call a, a confirmed bachelor. I should have known by now. It's useless to expect any woman to put up with me for very long. Every time I get to know a nice woman, it always ends sadly. Why is that? Well, the last time it happened with Mavanwi. She was a really lovely girl. She taught music appreciation. And she said, Louis, I'll always be very fond of you, and I'll remember you with great affection. But at the same time, there is something about you that makes me want to hit you over the head with my mandolin. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew why. Mm. Well, you give up too easily, perhaps. I mean, prospective husbands are expected to show a little more perseverance. That's probably it. I can never imagine myself being successful with women, so of course, I never am. I can't think how you ever got as far as applying to the marriage bureau. Oh, that was different. I, I had no alternative. I mean, it was essential. Ah, now we're coming to it. You wanted a rich wife, is that it? Oh, no, no, the, the money didn't matter. I would have been getting a rise in salary anyway if... <laughs> you see, I, I wanted a wife urgently. It was a case of, of needs must. Good Lord, I, I would never even have contemplated taking such a step at my age unless... <laughs> Do you 
really want to hear all this? I think it might help. Oh, very well. There's the possibility of promotion at the school. At the end of the summer term, you see, old Arthur Johnson will be retiring, and that means a housemastership will become vacant. But what's that got to do now, with... Now, the head prefers applicants to be married men. Their wives are expected to help look after a mob of unruly boarders and act in loco parentis. Oh. I can see I've shocked you. No. You must want that post very much. Oh, I do. At least I... I suppose I do. I mean, I... I thought I did. But I, I dare say it wouldn't have worked. And anyway, I, I can't go through with it. Why not? Well, for one thing, it wouldn't be fair to Celia... And anyway, Celia has made it perfectly clear that she couldn't bear to leave Sandgate, so really... I'm sure I... if you explained it to her tactfully, you could persuade her to change her mind about that. Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm afraid not. Frankly, I don't think she'd ever be happy as a housemaster's wife. What Celia wants is love. I'm not sure that's entirely true. Now, look here. You really mustn't give up so easily. Persevere. Why not stay a little longer and carry on with your plan? Deceive your sister? Oh, no, I, I couldn't I'm not do suggesting that. you should deceive her. Why not tell her the truth, just as you've told me? Once she knows the facts of the matter, she can decide what she wants to do about it. Oh, I, I, I don't know about that. Well, she won't like it at first, but she may come to see that it has its advantages in time. You really must tell her. Miss Tabitha Twitchit has very soft paws. But Tabitha Twitchit has very sharp claws, velvety pincushions, quick as a... You're not listening. Oh, I, I am. <laughs> I am indeed. I'm afraid I must be boring you. No, really, I am concentrating hard. Honestly, you think my little verses aren't altogether worthless, then? I was admiring the way you read them. You put so much expression into them. Indeed, I was wondering how you'd feel about reading your poems to an audience of small boys, uh, carefully selected small boys. But I don't know any small boys. Ah, but that's all right. I know a lot. An awful lot. Oh, at your school? Quite. If I become a housemaster, you see, I shall be required to organise small, improving entertainments for them at weekends and so on, to fill in the long winter evenings. So I thought you could recite and I could do card tricks. You never told me you did card tricks. Well, I suppose I, I could learn, couldn't I? It's only a question of having confidence in oneself. Kate said that's what I need. Perseverance. Did she? <laughs> How very odd. Did she really suggest that you should learn card tricks? Oh, no, 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 no. She meant... That I should ask you to uh, to marry me next June, and then by September we could be settled into the new house. What new house? Well, it's called Cook after Captain Cook. All the houses are called names like Livingstone and Columbus and Drake. I have the faintest idea what you're talking about. My house at school, or rather the house we will have when we're married, if we're accepted. Accepted by whom? Well, the governors. They tend to vet housemasters' wives pretty thoroughly ever since the unfortunate incident with uh, the lady at Vasco da Gama. Uh, she went in for homemade wine. Are you suggesting that I should be... Uh, what was the word you used? Vetted? I'm afraid it's obligatory. I, I can't even apply for the post as housemaster unless the board are satisfied that my wife will be a suitable candidate. Let me understand you. In order to be a housemaster, you have to be a married man. Well, our head prefers that. In other words, that is the reason you decided to embark upon matrimony, to further your career. Well, if you look at it one way, I, I suppose you, you, you might put it like that. Well, it, it depends on... Oh. Yes. I think you might have told me that right from the beginning. I suppose I should have done that. But I wasn't sure how you'd take it. Badly. I realise that. At one moment, I, I lost my nerve completely. I, I was about to abandon the whole idea. But Kate made me change my mind and try again. So Kate told you to persevere, did she? She certainly did. Once she had assured herself that I wasn't after your money, she seemed to be quite in favour of the whole project. I mean, she'll miss you, no doubt. Miss but, me? Well, yes, when we moved to Dorking. Dorking? Well, it's not actually in Dorking, it's more on the fringe. If you can imagine yourself leaving the centre of Dorking and heading southeast, you'll find the school about a quarter of a mile... I'm sorry, the... Lewis, but I cannot imagine myself leaving Dorking because I can't visualise myself arriving there in the first place. I told you, I couldn't possibly leave Sandgate. 
You obviously weren't listening to a word I said. Oh, I was. But I thought, after we got married, I might persuade you... After we got married, if we ever did, I should have expected you to come and take up residence with us. But, but, but my work as a teacher... Well, there are schools in Sandgate too, you know. Why, I could never start all over again at another school. It was bad enough starting at the first one. In a strange town, too. Then I'm sorry for you. Either you must be prepared to come and live with us in this lovely seaside resort, or you had better pack your bags and leave us as you found us. In peace. Oh, I see. Well, uh, uh, Well, that's... That's that, then. <laughs> uh, Kate, you can come in now. We've finished. Oh, good. Is it all right? I'm afraid not. Uh, Celia doesn't fancy the idea. Kate, dear, do I understand that you were in favour of my leaving Sandgate and setting up home for the rest of my life among a crowd of little boys? I was trying to help. You told me you wanted to get married. But in the right circumstances to the right man, possibly. But as things turned Last out... Last night you thought Lewis was the right man. That was before I realised how selfish he is. Oh, but I didn't Fancy mean... Fancy expecting me to go and live in Dorking. It's a very attractive town and within a stone's throw of Box Hill... Really, I don't understand this obsession you have with throwing stones. No, I'm very sorry, it won't do at all. Here I am and here I stay. Now, Celia, don't be hasty. Don't say anything you may regret later. Lewis has made you a very fair offer. Remember, this may be your last chance. That's a beastly thing to say. I've had plenty of other chances. Look at Mr Barstow at the Liberal Party picnic. He was positively insistent. As I remember it, marriage was not uppermost in his thoughts. He has some very eccentric habits, and a fortnight later he was arrested for improper conduct in the public library. Poor Mr Barstow. If only I'd allowed him to have shared my packed lunch, it uh, might never and have And don't you remember that. all that unpleasantness when he was judging the swimming guard? Now, I still say Gillian mm. Pumphrey misinterpreted his intentions. It was a simple gesture of congratulations. Would you both excuse Listen to me, me. Celia. Lewis Fenn is worth a hundred Edwin Barstows, and you know it. He I is not the on. only pebble on the beach, Kate, dear. And talking of eccentric habits... Lewis has an absolute mania for throwing stones. I shouldn't advise you to let him go anywhere near the conservatory. Uh, look here, I'll don't be just, so uh, petty-minded, Celia. Uh, if you don't mind. Lewis is a nice, good, straightforward man, and you should think yourself extremely lucky that he's asked you to. What was that? Poor Lewis. I'm afraid we must have frightened him off. Aren't people strange? Uh, gone for good, do you mean? I shouldn't be surprised. He's been packed and ready to go all day. Well, let him go, then. What does it matter? Clearly the marriage is off, so the sooner he catches his train back to London, the better. He can't do that. Why not? The last through train went at 8.12. Now there's only the 9.50, and that means changing at Ashford. Oh. Oh, well, in that case, he'd better go to a hotel. Well, most of them are closed till Easter. Don't worry. I'll go up and have a word with him presently. He can stay till tomorrow, as long as you keep out of each other's way. Uh, yes, yes, ju just a minute. Right, uh, come in, Kate. Oh, you've gone to bed already. Did I wake you? Uh, no, no, not really. I was just lying here thinking. And I came in and disturbed you. I'm so sorry. Oh, you need some more coal for your fire. You've let it get very low. Got much more than red ashes. I thought I'd let it burn itself out. To tell you the truth, I'm not used to a fire in the bedroom. I, I couldn't sleep at all last night. It was so warm. Shame on you. You said at breakfast that you'd slept like a top. Yes, I, I'm sorry. I was nervous too, of course. That didn't help. Nervous? Of what today had in store, I knew I had to propose to Celia. Oh, yes. Pity that all went wrong. Oh, I don't know. In a way, it was probably a narrow escape. For you? No, 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 for her. I'd be hopeless as a husband. I dare say I'd have been pretty hopeless as a housemaster, too. I've never made much of an impression on the school so far. Still, there's no point in worrying. It's all over and done with now. I wonder. Hmm? What do you mean? Oh, I don't know. I wasn't sure I'd find you still here. I thought you might have packed your bag and slipped away quietly. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Well, you were going to this morning until I caught you. Oh, that's different. I, I didn't know you so well then. No, I, I wouldn't have walked out without saying goodbye. That would have been very rude. 
Anyway, there are no more trains tonight. I came to tell you that you're welcome to stay till tomorrow. I'll give you an early breakfast and you can go off before Celia comes down. If you still want to. Uh, what do you mean, if I still want to? Oh, things change sometimes, don't they? Do you mind if I talk to you very frankly? Oh, dear. My headmaster's wife sometimes says, Mr. Fenn, may I speak frankly? And then I know I've dropped another frightful clangor, <laughs> like the time I took 32 boys on a nature ramble and came back with only 14. <laughs> it all rambled in different directions, you see. Oh, yes, we had a, a very frank talk about that. Don't worry. I'm not going to lecture you. I'm so glad. I say, would you like me to put the light on? No, don't. There's enough light like this from the fire. Yes, it's, it's cosy, isn't it? You know, I think I could get used to having a bedroom fire in time. Mm. When I was small, I used to sit by the fire for hours trying to see pictures in the coals. I always dreamed about growing up, leaving home, getting married. I hoped I'd see myself in a long white dress and a veil. But of course, I never did. But why not? Well, nobody ever asked me. It's ironic, isn't it? Someone finally asks Celia to go away and get married, and she says no. I can tell you this, Louis. I wouldn't have said no. What? I did warn you I was going to speak frankly. I can't be much franker than that, can I? You mean, if... if I'd asked you to marry me? I would have got out my diary and fixed the date immediately. Oh, Kate, my dear... I, I don't know what to say. Oh, you've got to be equally frank with me. Tell me at once if the idea appalls you, and then I'll go away and we can regard the incident as closed. You really think you could be happy as a, a housemaster's wife? I think I could be happy as your wife, which is all that matters. Oh, you've, you've quite taken my breath away. Kate, will you... Will you marry me? I've just told you I will. Do try to concentrate. Oh, I'm sorry. It's taking me a little while to, to adjust to the idea, that's all. Louis, there is one more thing I'd like to get settled before we finally decide. Yes, what's that? I must confess that I'm not very experienced in the ways of love and romance, or whatever you choose to call it. I hope that doesn't deter you. Oh, no. No, I'm not deterred. My own case is a, a bit similar, though, of course, I, I have had moments of... Um... I'd really rather not hear about those, if you don't mind. Oh. You see, on one point, I really am quite determined. I shouldn't want this to be a marriage in name only. Well, it seems absurd not to enter into the spirit of the thing fully. Don't you agree? Oh, I, I'm sure you're right. Only, we do have to be quite certain. And uh, I do find you rather personable. I, I thought I ought to make that absolutely clear. Oh, thank you. I, I find you personable as well. That's a very lucky coincidence under the circumstances. Dear Louis. Uh, may I? Please. Mm. Oh. Mm, yes. I always wondered how it would be. I'm so glad it happened to be you. Oh, dear, dear Kate. Mm. Mm. I'd feel such a fool doing this with a complete stranger. <laughs> <laughs> so there you are at last. Good morning, Kate. Good morning, Lewis. I'm sorry, dear. I'm afraid I overslept. We, we both did. <laughs> Is there any tea in the pot? Of course. <sighs> Not yourself. Good. I didn't expect to see you again, Lewis. Kate said you would be catching the early train this morning. Well, there's been a change of plan. 
Lewis is going to stay on a little longer. Is that really wise? I'm afraid it's essential. We have several practical details to organise. I hope that won't put you out at all, Celia. It's no concern of mine what you... What do you mean, practical details? What are you both up to? You've been plotting and planning again behind my back. Uh, planning, not plotting. Don't deny it. I heard you talking and laughing last night when I went up to bed, and that was well after eleven. You were in the spare bedroom for over an hour and a half, Kate. Oh, much longer than that. I've only just left it. Do you mean to tell me? She means to tell you that I have asked Kate to marry me, and she has accepted. Mm. Marry, indeed. I never heard anything so ridiculous. The moment a man comes into the house, you go completely to pieces. I despair <laughs> of you, Kate. I really do. Oh, Celia, be happy for us. We want you to be as happy as we are. How could you? Spending the night in a strange bed. That sort of thing is so vulgar and childish. If I'd married Lewis, I should have insisted on a platonic relationship. <laughs> I thought you were the one who wanted a family. Well, babies are rather appealing, I admit, but... The mechanics of it are so primitive. Well, luckily you're not going to marry Lewis, and I am. So the problem doesn't arise, does it? I suppose now you'll both want my bedroom, father's bedroom, because you need the extra space. Oh, no, dear, we shan't want that. You see, we won't be here. Why not? Where will you be? At Lewis's school, in Dorking. It isn't actually in Dorking, my dear, but there's a bus that goes right Do you mean to say you'd actually leave Sandgate and bury yourself in some dreary little out-of-the-way village? Certainly. I'm going to be the new housemaster's wife. I do hope I manage to do it properly. You can deal with the parents when they come and complain. You'll be very good at that. And what about me? No, dear, you'd be hopeless with the parents. You'd get their names muddled. I mean, what about me? Living here alone in this huge, empty house. How would I ever survive? Well, I... Uh, I don't know. As far as I can see, there's only one way out. And what's that? Suicide. I shall simply put an end to it all. Then you'll be sorry. Oh, nonsense. She doesn't really mean it. Oh, so you think I'm not serious? You're going to get a very big surprise. Give me that knife. I shall slash my wrists. It's only a butter knife. And anyway, you faint if you have a nosebleed. Very well. I shall put my head in the gas oven. No, you won't. You haven't seen the inside of that oven recently. You'd get yourself absolutely filthy. Stop making difficulties. I shall do... something. Just you wait and see. Where are you going? To my room, to meditate on ways and means. You haven't finished your egg. Oh, yes, that's one way. I can starve myself to death. Of course, she won't do anything. Of course not. So we don't have to worry about her. I'm not worried at all. She'll be fine. Of course she will. Toast? Oh, no, thanks, I... I'm not very hungry. Neither am I. It's peculiar. I was terribly hungry when I first woke up. It started out as such a beautiful morning, didn't it? And now it's all clouded over. There's a mist blowing in off the sea. Pierre looks like a poor, faint ghost of itself. Never mind. We're not ghosts. We're very much alive. Of course we are. I never felt so much alive. And we're happy, and we're going to get married, and what's going to happen to Celia? Yes, Celia is a problem, no doubt about that. We can't leave her here to fend for herself. She's no good at that sort of thing. And this house would be much too big for one person living alone. She'd rattle round in it. And she'd go all melancholy. I suppose we couldn't take her with us. What, back to school? Mm hmm Oh, it's only a very small house and absolutely brimming over with boys. There wouldn't be room for us and Celia. So what are we going to do? I wish I knew. I suppose... I suppose we could not get married. And I could not become a housemaster. But what good would that do? Well, couldn't we go on as we are now? And you could come down here sometimes, like this weekend, for little holidays. We could be together then. It wouldn't be the same, though, would it? No. And you'd hate all that travelling. It would be unsettling for all of us. <sighs> Unsatisfactory. Oh, just look at that sea mist. The piers vanished altogether. They'll be sounding the foghorn soon. 
Oh, I, I didn't know there was a foghorn. Out on the Channel night ship. It's a warning to the other boats to keep away. That must be a lonely sort of life, on board a light ship. Hmm. My dear, you're still thinking about Celia. Hmm. Well, we can't go there and leave her. We can't take her with us. I think we'd better forget the whole idea. Kate! After all, it was only a sort of dream, really, wasn't it? We hardly know one another. You know more about me than anyone in the world, and I know more about you. All the same. I don't believe that's enough. Not if it means leaving Celia. You'd give it all up because of her? Not the longest engagement on record, but I'm afraid we must. Is it really all over? You know it is. It has to be. I'm sorry, Lewis. So am I. Terribly sorry. What a depressing weekend for you. Coming all the way to Sandgate for nothing. Oh, no. No, I, I wouldn't say that. Not at all. Why don't we go out anyway? To the shops. Anywhere. Just for a walk. A last walk together. To the pier and back again. Before I catch my train. I'll get my coat. And Kate. What? It was a lovely dream. While it lasted. <laughs> I can't hear the waves breaking today. Everything's muffled up in this white mist. Nothing but the hooting of that foghorn. It's like being spacemen on an unknown planet. It won't last. The weather changes here quite quickly. By tomorrow, it'll all be different. The sun will be out again. By tomorrow, I won't be here. I'll think of you in Dorking. Not quite in Dorking, on the fringe. Oh. There's that man, the one with the dog. He's always here. He'll be here again tomorrow. My dear, you're shivering. Mm, I am a little chilly. This fog creeps into your bones. And your face is wet. The moisture. It's like walking about inside a cloud. They call it a sea fret. I don't know why. Well, let's get out of it before we both catch cold. We'll go somewhere indoors, somewhere warmer. But there isn't anywhere. This is an unknown planet. Of course there is. Look, that shop's lit up and the door's open. It's not a shop, it's an amusement arcade. Well, whatever it is, come on. Oh, that's better. At least it's a bit livelier. Not very much. One old man in a grubby white coat giving out change and two spotty lads playing on one of the tin tables. Never mind, they're people. Don't you see? We're not lost in space anymore. We've just rejoined the human race. <laughs> Have we? Do you want a game on this machine? I don't know how to play. I've never been in here before. Haven't you? I rather like it. I'll teach you. See if you think slot machines lower the tone. All right, then. Show me what to do. Well, I'll put the money in. Yeah. Now, right now. Get the first ball into the firing oh, position and then pull back that lever. Like this? Right? Oh, 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 it's gone mad! Beginner's luck. You hit the big bonus button. That's very good. One hundred, two, three, four. Six hundred and forty. Well done. You have a natural talent. And to think I never even knew it. Oh, let me try again. I love you. I know. I love you too. I can't go back to school and leave you just like that. I don't want you to. Now that I've found you, we, we can't just go back to where we were before. I want to be with you all the time. That's it. Look, Louis, can we be absolutely frank with one another? I don't see why not. It worked rather well last time. Then let me ask you, how much do you really like being a teacher? I loathe it, actually. But you must have liked it once, when you started. No, I, I drifted into teaching when I left college because I thought I'd enjoy dealing with people. But then I found out small boys aren't people. <laughs> and by the time I realized that, it was too late. I was trapped. You must have realized I detest small boys. Good. That makes it much easier. What? I was going to suggest, why don't you hand in your resignation and leave Dorking altogether? Then move to Sandgate. 
But what would I do to earn my living? Our house is much too big, even for three of us. We could turn it into a guest house, and you could help to run it. Now, how about that? Could we? Really? Well, I don't see why not. You said you enjoy dealing with people, and Celia can lend a hand too. She's not bad at flower arrangements, and she can make water lilies out of table napkins. <laughs> oh, come on, Lewis. Let's go and tell her about it, shall we? A guest house? I don't know what poor father would have said. He'd have given us his blessing. He was always in favour of anything that made a little more money. And I'm sure that with three of us to run it, it's bound to be a huge success. I'll take care of the cooking and housekeeping, as usual, and Lewis can see to the correspondence and the accounts, making up the bills and so on. We'd want you to meet the guests and keep them happy. Poses on the breakfast trays, little personal touches like that. You'd be so good at it. Would I still have time to carry on with my poetry? Oh, of course you would. You could read them to the residents in the lounge. And there'd always be rows of tiny wellingtons in the hall celia has a secret passion for tiny willies yes but the question is who would i be exactly i'm sorry i, I don't just quite... visualize the printed note paper the sandgate terrace guest house proprietors mr and mrs l fenn with the assistance of miss c brady it doesn't seem quite right does it we'd be equal partners all three of us but you'd be married and i wouldn't I don't call that very equal. Oh, you mustn't feel like that about but it. how do you expect me to feel? A middle-aged spinster living with her married sister and brother-in-law. Oh, no, it's not how I see myself. It really isn't. But, Celia, dear, don't you forget, didn't want... it was my idea to go to that wretched marriage bureau in the first place. Well, yes, I but... was the one who paid the fee, Kate, not you. So I should be the one to get married. That's only fair. Celia, you've already turned Lewis down. You told him to go away. Ah, but he didn't go, did he? He's just hanging on, making me look ridiculous. But you said you didn't want to marry me. Well, I suppose I'm allowed to change my mind, aren't I? It seems perfectly obvious. If you're going to stay here as anybody's husband, it ought to be mine. Celia, I don't quite know how to put this, but the fact remains I don't love you and I do love Kate. What has love got to do with it? It's the principle of the thing that concerns me. You told me that if you'd married Lewis, it would have been a platonic relationship. And I meant every word of it. Make no mistake about that. We would have separate bedrooms, naturally. It doesn't sound very natural to me. Oh, hmm? Since you and Kate seem quite determined to give way to your baser emotions, I suppose there's nothing to stop you sharing the big bedroom. Yes, I could move into Kate's room and you could both have mine. You see, I'm prepared to meet you halfway. I wouldn't want you to think I was being difficult about this. You mean you'd marry Lewis and I'd live with him? Is that what you're saying? Kate, dear, there are certain things one does not say. I'm merely suggesting that if I were to marry Lewis, we could at least have a white wedding. It would look so much nicer in the weekly paper. So far as Sandgate is concerned, you and I will settle down to a respectable, conventional married life? I sincerely hope so. And as far as we are concerned, uh, within these four walls, the real marriage would be the one between Lewis and me. Not a marriage, dear. Lewis and I would be married. You'd have the other thing. A liaison, shall we say. But there would certainly be no need for that ever to be discussed within these walls or anywhere else. I see. Well... Well, that sounds reasonable enough to me. But it's up to Lewis, really. Lewis, what do you say? <clears throat> Celia, will you marry me? How kind of you to ask. When would you suggest? Well, I, I do have to give a term's notice to that ghastly school, but I, I could probably leave after the exams, shall we say, the end of June? June? That would suit us very well, wouldn't it, Kate? Hmm. And now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll just slip up to my room. The feline muse is descending. I've just had an idea for a poem. The Pussycat's Wedding Day. Just think of it. Tabitha Twitchit, all in lace. You must read it to us presently. Lewis, you really are happy about this. You're quite sure? I'm absolutely sure. If it's going to make Celia happy, why not? Oh! It's not just my happiness, is it? I'm thinking of the happiness of us all. Isn't that how the best romances always end? With everyone living happily ever after? <laughs> <laughs> that was To the Pier and Back Again by Peter Ling, with Anne Morrish as Kate, Jean Trend as Celia, and Basil Moss as Lewis. The play was directed by David Johnston. This video was uploaded to the channel Thinking Out Louder.
Please like, comment and subscribe to the Thinking Out Louder channel.